Welcome to Unit 4. In this unit, our ultimate goal is surface area. And it's surface area of a large polyhedron, uh, what are called composite materials, so, or sorry, composite objects. So we're going to have to start and, and let's just start with the, the basics of what a polyhedron is and how that works. And then as we, as we, as we go through it, we're going to add some things to your skills. And pretty soon as we're done, you'll be able to take and find the surface area of these relatively easily. So in grade six, we study polyhedrons. We're going to use these again to help us work with the surface area prisms. So we need to review polyhedrons and how they're named. <clears throat> so a polyhedron is basically an object that has polygons for side. Now remember, a polygon is a flat surface, like a triangle square, stuff like that. We're going to be concerned with only two classes of polyhedrons at this point. We're going to be doing prisms and pyramids. If you take a look, we have basically got a regular, sorry, prism, which has all of the sides the same. And the most common one we have is the cube right here. And that means that every face that you see, all six of them are all exactly the same. Square prisms um, have this here and this here at the bottom are both squares. And they're joined by rectangles, all four rectangles around each side. The other classification is called the pyramid. Now, pyramids have one base, whereas the square prism over here, our prism has two which are the same. Uh, we call them bases, and you can flip them upside down, they remain the same. But as you know, for a pyramid, you only have one. Now, everything else is a triangle, and it comes to a point. So that's how we tell a pyramid from a prism. Now, on pyramids and prisms, we have several items or several um, objects. The first one is called an edge. An edge is where two faces meet. And you can see the edges um, right here on this cube. There's an edge. That's where that face and the one on the bottom meet. Uh, where the top and the front meet, that's an edge right there. A vertex is where edges meet. We commonly call these corners. So here's an edge from the front and the right. And that point right there where they meet and make the corner is called the vertex. Plural of vertex is called vertices. And a face is a flat surface. So in our case, our flat surfaces are going to be polygons. OK, if you take a look down here, you can see on my drawing, here is the base. It's called the base because there's one here. You see the pentagon here and the pentagon here. That's how you identify the base on a prism. There's two of them that match, and they're all joined with rectangles. The edges are where the two faces meet, right here and here. Here's an edge over here. There's an edge. And of course, the vertex are all your corners. And you can see them right here. These are your vertices. In this case, there's 10 of them on that particular one. OK, so if you turn the page, the first thing we have to do, now that we know about all the pieces, is we have to be able to name them correctly. The key to identifying geometric solids is to identify the base. And it's, if the figure has two sides which are identical and opposite each other, joined by rectangles, that is basically the base, those two that are the same. If you have two of them which are joined by rectangles, it's always a prism. If you only have one base and everything else is a triangle, it's a pyramid. So let's take a look. We have what are called prefixes in polygons. Prefixes are used to tell how many of each object we have. One of the most common ones we use is tri. And you probably realize that tri is from the idea of a triangle. A triangle has three sides, so it's called the triangle, because it has three angles. We also know tricycles, right? You have a tricycle, and the tricycle's got I'm not very much of a drawer today. pretty bad tricycle. But anyway, tricycle is called a tricycle because it has one, two, three wheels. Okay? So when anything you see that's got three sides on it, like this, you'll see a triangle. That means that this is a triangular. Now you notice there's a triangle here, a triangle there. There's two of them, so this is a triangular. And it's called a prism because there are two matching faces. 
Right. Now, the other one has a base. This has also got a triangular base, but it comes to a peak up here, and you notice there's one here, one here, and there's one in the back. So it's actually got four triangles, three on the three on the sides and one on the bottom. So this makes it a triangular, and it comes to a peak. So let's say pyramid. This particular one, when it's made up with perfectly the same triangles, they're all equilateral triangles, it's got a special name. It's a tetrahedron, okay? Just like one that's got four sides, which is perfect, is called a cube. When they're triangles, it's a tetrahedron. Now, four-sided figures. Four-sided figures begin with R-E-C-T, rect, or square, okay? So this one here, we take a look, we've got a rectangle here. That means this is a rectangular. You'll see there's another rectangle over here. It's a rectangular. And it's got two opposing sides, which match, so that makes it a prism. This one over here has a couple of things it can be called. Now, it's supposed to be a cube, so it's supposed to have all the sides the same. So being that it's all the same, you would say it is a cube. Now, the proper name for a cube is actually a square prism, right? You choose one of these squares to be uh, the base, and you would basically, because squares are, pure, are rectangles, you could say that they're all joined by rectangles also. So a cube has actually got two names. There's a lot more, too. It's also a quadrilateral and a bunch of other things. Over here, you take a look at the base. Now, if this was a square base, it would be a square pyramid. Since I'm assuming this is a rectangular base, not a square, but a rectangle, we're going to call this a rectangular pyramid. Okay? Remember, pyramids come to a point. On our next page, we've got five sides. And anything that starts with five starts with the word penta. You'll notice that the most common penta is you have incurred or understand is called a pentagon. Okay, five-sided figure. And if you take a look at our first figure, you'll notice that there is a five-sided top, there's a five-sided bottom. Now, since they're both the same, they're both pentagons, this is pentagon, pentang, pentagonal, sorry, I always get the spelling mixed up, pentagonal, or pentagonal, pentagonal, prism. If you're having trouble spelling it, go pentagonal. It's properly pronounced pentagonal. Over here, we have the five-sided base again, only this time it's on the bottom, and there's nothing matching it up top here. Instead, it comes to a point, so this is again a pentagonal pyramid. The second last one is when you have six. The prefix for the word six is hexa. You'll notice that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides there, and one, two, three, four, five, six sides there. They are opposite each other, so this is a prism. So it's a hexagonal prism. If you're having trouble spelling it, think of hexagonal. Okay, and over here, the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's on the base only. There's nothing up here but a point. So this is a hexagonal pyramid. Moving down to the last one. We're going to be using what's called octa. Now, eight comes from the word octa, or octa actually comes from the word eight, octopus having eight arms. So if you see eight sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, here, and the same thing over here, you'll notice they're opposing, matching sides, that makes them a prism, and since it's an octagonal prism here, so it's octagonal prism. Over here on the next one, same thing, eight sides on the bottom, so it's octagonal. And of course, it comes to a point that makes it a pyramid. All right, so that takes care of our naming. I will be testing you on it. So let's just see how you can do. 
here are basically the eight figures that you have to know, the prisms and the pyramids. Don't turn back. I want you to see if you can name them all. So, have a try. Okay. Since these ones all have matching parts, we know that these are all prisms. So the bottom here on all of them, sorry, should be plural, prism. Spelling's not good today. All right, now the next thing to do is to name the type of prism it is. This one has opposing face, sorry, opposing faces here, which are the triangles. This is a triangular prism. This one is a rectangular prism. Now, if this was a square, it would be a square prism, but I'm going to go with rectangular. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. That makes it a hexagonal. And over here, I've got this one's square, so I'm going to go with a square prism. Okay? You'll notice I left out a couple of them there. The, octog the octagonal one is missing. Now, let's take a look at the ones down here. These are all coming to a point. So because they all come to a point and they have a single base right here, here, and here, these are all pyramids. Now we have to name them. So take a look at the base. How many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides is hexa, so it's hexagonal. This one, again, I'm not sure it's supposed to be a square or a, a rectangle, but I'm going to go with the rectangle here. So this is a rectangular pyramid. If you had marks like this, then it would be a square pyramid. But you could still call it a rectangle rectangular pyramid because a square is still a rectangle. Again, one, two, three, four, five. Five sides is penta. This is pentagonal or pentang pentagonal or pentagonal. Pentagonal, should be no there. And of course this one has eight, so this is a octagonal. Okay. Note that all the above pyramids have one side which is bounded by triangles, which means you have one base here, and everything else on all of them are all triangles. Because they're all triangles, that makes them a pyramid. Okay? Now, moving on to the next one. Now that you're familiar with naming the parts of a, of a pentagonal or polyhedron, sorry, your next job is to create a net. A net is a pattern that can be folded into a polyhedron, and we did this in grade 6, but I gave you the nets. So if you take a look on your page, 171 in your textbook, there's two nets shown. The first is the net of a, pentag of a pentagonal prism, right there. And the second is of a right cylinder. On page 172 and 173, there are two more of them. Your job is to create a net that you can fold into a prism or a pyramid. I'm going to try to give you a 15-minute um, time limit, but in the past it's never worked out that way. Um, it's a partnership job, so you will test your ability to work efficiently and work in groups. You're allowed to use tape to put your net together, but it must be one full polyhedron when you're done. So your job is to, here, activity one, make me a polyhedron of any shape, size that you wish. My, my advice is to stick with one of the simple ones if you can. However, you can do whichever one you wish. Once you've got that one, you're going to pass it into me, and I will mark it, and I will return it. The second one you're going to do now you have to be more specific. I need you to create this particular rectangular prism. It must be 6 centimeters high, 4 centimeters by 3 centimeter base. It must be perfect. I'm going to give you a plus or minus 1 millimeter variance that you can be out. Anything outside that, you lose significant marks. Tape it together and hand it in. And number three, this time you've got to do this, 4 by 5 by 3 by 7, and you're going to put it together, and you're going to give it to me also. But Sorry, but this time I don't want you to fold it. 
This time I want you to give it to me as a net. Unfold it, please. Then I will measure your sides. So those are your three projects for this lesson. Complete them and hand them in. And once that's done, we can get started on your lesson assignment. So get started and hand them in.